everyone, welcome back to my channel, Jamie from Colors. I'm Jamie, and today we are picking another color for monochromatic color scheme. So, if you haven't seen my last two videos, go back and watch them. The first one that you'll want to watch is about the color wheel. And we just go over the basics of what the color wheel is, what are the parts of the color wheel, and how we can use it in our coloring. And then the Second video is our first monochromatic where we used purple to color an entire picture or violet. So today we're looking at just our primary and secondaries here on our wheel. I have some different lights turned on because the red and orange were just not looking like very different colors, but this will not be the lighting that I color in because it's casting quite a bit of shadow. But um, I just want you to be able to see the difference here. So. Um, Anyway, so these are our primary colors. We have red, yellow, and blue. And our secondary colors, which are orange, green, and violet. I am still getting over a cold. I apologize. <clears throat> but I'm trying to get some filming done because summer is here and kids. So I really apologize for my voice. Um, how we get orange, violet, and green are by mixing the primaries together. Red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green, blue and red make violet. So that's all covered in our first color wheel um, video. So again, go back and watch that. Today we just want to pick a color to do a monochromatic picture with. So since we've already used violet, I'm going to take it out of the running and I'm going to flip these over. I'm not going to look at the back not looking and we're just going to randomly pick one and that will be the color that we're going to do an entire picture in. Help me pick a good one you guys. And yellow! Oh no! <laughs> that was like the one color I really didn't want. Okay. Yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow. All right, we can do yellow. We will figure it out. Yellow. That is probably a color I have never done a monochrome picture of. That and red. Yeah, I think I've done most every other picture. So this will be good. Yellow will be good. All right, I'm gonna pull our yellow supplies, fix my lighting, find a picture, and we'll be back to color yellow. I've pulled a whole bunch of yellow and I found a picture. Let's go over what I've pulled so that you know everything will be in the description box down below as well. And um, yes, so <clears throat> I've pulled some yellow pan pastels, um, diary lid yellow tint and diary lid and then as, it as a shade as well. And then I've pulled my clean color, hello airplane. <laughs> I've pulled my clean color Zig brush markers. They're a watercolor marker um, in all the yellows that I could find. Lemon yellow, yellow, bright yellow, mustard, and fluorescent yellow. And then I've grabbed my yellow gel pen. And then I decided to use the Polychromos pencils. Um, I just haven't used them in a while, so I thought they would be fun to use. So Naples yellow, light yellow glaze, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, this is a yellow lemon, chrome yellow, dark chrome yellow, dark Naples ochre, cream, cadmium yellow and cadmium yellow dark. So there's quite a variety of yellow we got going on. And the book that I've chosen to use is Emily Olberg's Fairy Tales book. I feel like I'm talking really loud, I'm sorry. Um, and I think we'll do this picture here. It's a little more simple, but I think we can do something really pretty with it. All right, so let's get started. OK, 
Okay, so first I think I'm gonna do a yellow, well everything's gonna be yellow, but I'm gonna do a pan pastel background. So I'm gonna slip a piece of paper in there so that I don't get it all over my other pages. And I'm gonna start with the lightest shade, lightest tone here. take my shade, the darkest one here. Okay. All right, I'm gonna use just a cotton pad, a little bigger tool, and I'm just going to dip it in my lightest color here. blend it and buff it all together. Okay. That gives us a nice gradiated background. To start out with, all right. with the pan pastels, I'm going to go spray it with my final fixative. I'll have it linked in the description box down below as well, but I do have to go outside to spray that. So I'm going to go out and spray that and then when it's dry, we'll continue on with the coloring. Alright, I'm going to test, I've got my clean color zigs, which is what I want to use next. So I'm going to test them and just make sure I know what each color looks like. So. Number 52, so it's quite a, pretty close to orange, a very warm yellow, it's called bright yellow. See, this is number 50, okay, and that's yellow, so true yellow. This is 51, which is lemon. This is 01 fluorescent yellow. It looks like a highlighter yellow. <clears throat> and this is mustard. 467 mustard, which is pretty brownish, okay. All right, so we can look at that for a reference and kind of put down some base colors for our flowers here. All right, so I'm thinking maybe I'm kind of thinking that mustard would be good for leaves, but I might want to um, thin it out a little bit. Here's a water brush, we'll see what we can do. Let's just test a little one. Let's see, Ooh, that has quite a bit of water on it. I don't know. So that's not bad. Mm, okay, so maybe we'll just do some like that. I don't want to use 
too much water. I don't love this water brush. This is the Derwent water brush and I always feel like there's just always way too much water coming out of it. I never have to um, squeeze for more water, it just kind of comes out and so I don't feel like I have as much control as I do with my, what's it called, the Pentat or something, I'll link it down below. But this is the one that was sitting here so I grabbed it. Alright, we'll let all that dry. The 50, kind of the pure yellow. Okay. And then we're going to use the bright yellow on the last two here. Okay, I'm gonna grab that mustard and I'm just gonna stick it right there in the middle there. Okay. As well as put it on the lip up here of the jar. dry and then we'll come back in with our pencils and shade some stuff. Okay this is dry so let's go ahead and swatch our pencils so we know for sure what they look like and then we'll put the pencil down. So I'm not able to see 
all of these well enough, I think, to write. So let's see. We'll try. One, oh yeah, that's not going to write. We're going to be able to see that. Okay, so this is 105. We'll just put a little light cadmium. This is cream. 102. Light yellow glaze. Way light. 104. This one is yellow lemon, which has a green tint. I don't know. Still pretty yellow though. That's 205. And let's see, light chrome yellow. That's 106. And cadmium yellow. 107. Naples yellow. 185. Dark cadmium yellow. 108. This is dark chrome yellow. 109. And let's see. Dark Naples Ochre. 184. And Light Yellow Ochre. 183. <clears throat> Alright, that gives us something to look at to make sure the leg. Okay. So let's take our darkest 183 light yellow ochre and let's put some shadow on. That just kind of helped add a little yellow, more yellow tint to the brownish color there. Okay, let's try putting, this is Dark Naples Ochre 184. Let's try putting this down. So polychromos pencils are not as opaque as um, Prismacolors. So more of the color underneath is going to show through. It's not just going to cover it up, which can be good, 
and it can be bad depending on what you want. They layer very well, but you also tend to have to put more layers to get a nice blend than you do with your Prismacolors. It takes sometimes a little longer with them to build up that color and get that nice smooth blend, which is why I like putting a layer of marker down underneath when I do um, color with the Polychromos pencils. Then let's take Cadmium Yellow 107. Okay, that looks really nice. I love the subtle shading on it. All right, so that's our leaves. I know that the marker, because I thought it was so much water, kind of ran. I'm just not worrying about it. Crap happens, we just move on. <laughs> All right, then let's see. Um, maybe let's do these really bright ones. All right, let's try. Oh, I'm almost knocking things off my desk here. Okay, let's try this 205, the yellow lemon on this little rosy one flower up here at the top. It's really similar in color. I don't know how much it's going to give us. Not a whole lot. I kind of want more. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Let's do dark cadmium yellow just right down at the bottom here. We'll kind of take it up each of those lines. Just so we get a little bit of color variation. a little bit. Okay, that was that dark cadmium yellow. Then let's go back to that yellow lemon and see if we can just blend it a little bit. All right, and this is where having an opaque pencil like a Prisma would be beneficial because we could put lighter over darker and we'd see a difference. So like my 
Prismacolor eggshell is sitting right here. I'm just going to grab it. See, it comes right out. You can see it on that color. And that's because the Prismacolors are more opaque than the Polychromos. Like, you can color with white right on here and it will... With a white Prismacolor. And it will do something. Whereas with the Polychromos, you really can't do that. So this is the white Prismacolor that I'm kind of playing with to give a little lightness to the top of this flower. Keep that white Prismacolor to help us on the other one too. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's try the light chrome yellow. Oh yeah, that's good. Let's do that down here on this other fluorescent flower. Okay, then I'm gonna take that Prismacolor White and just put it out on the tips here. Okay, let's take the Light Cadmium Yellow. this one. So let's take the light cadmium yellow. Okay, and then that cream. have these bright yellow warm yellow so let's do dark chrome yellow put that in the center Okay, let's go ahead and put that color down here on this flower as well. <clears throat> All 
right, then let's take the dark cadmium yellow. Okay, then I want to take let's take the light cadmium yellow. Okay. Alright, we have this bottle cap here at the top, so I'm going to take the light yellow ochre. Then the Naples yellow. Let's zoom out and take a look, see if there's anything we want to add before adding the gel pen. <clears throat> okay. I think it's looking good. All right, let's get rid of, or we'll set our pencils aside here. And let's take our gel pens. Let's see what we have here. All right, this one looks very yellow. Yeah, that's kind of that fluorescent yellow. I'm just going to kind of put them in order over here. This one looks... It's got some shimmer in it. Quite a bit darker. This kind of leans towards orange. This one looks pretty similar in the... Oh, but it's very different. Okay. Alright. I use that one quite a bit. Right, so that's kind of the colors I have. I'll have the gel pens I use linked in the description box down below, but they're not numbered or have names, so I can't tell you which specifically I'm using. All right, I want to take... What do I want to do first? Okay, I'm going to take this kind of sparkly one. Let's put that on these. Okay, and then with that same color, I'm going to come down here to the bottom.
I take that it is our monochrome yellow picture just gonna take a little of the Naples yellow I love it. I've never done um, a monochrome yellow picture before and it was interesting for me to also see like um, how different the shades of yellow between um, the different supplies. Everything we used said yellow on it but as you can see there's lots of different interpretation of what yellow is so that was kind of fun too to see the the difference in there. So I hope you guys liked this video. I really like how this turned out. I think it's beautiful. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, I hope you'll stick around for my other coloring scheme um, videos. So subscribe so you don't miss any of those. And I hope you guys have an awesome weekend with lots of time to color and relax and rejuvenate yourself for the coming week. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.